Okay. So why all of a sudden are, are they a complete and utter shambles when you're doing all the things that got you to being so good? And that must be one of the hardest parts of being a manager, yeah? That's, that's why you end up getting the sack, because sometimes people don't listen to you. Is that another reason? Are players stopping, stopping listening to them? There's, there are so many things that it could be. Right. But to put your finger on it... But you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't put me any money on them suddenly turning it around for these last ten no. matches? No chance. No. How long, no. we, how long have we been saying that? Yeah. We said it in the Man City game. No. Yep. There have been a couple of games no. where we've said it this year. Went, there's a turning point. Yep. That's the standard. That's been set. Klopp will use that and then they'll kick on from here. Well, you, you no. think, what, they beat you United... Well, if they beat United 7-0, you... they've lost three and drawn one. <laughs> but, you know, we, we could go around... We could, we could go through almost the whole team, particularly the real big stars, and say, poor this year, poor... And it's form, it's decision-making, but I, I'm going to pick out one guy, uh, not, and it's not Van Dijk. Fabinho last year, and probably the year before, but last year when they were going for the quadruple, if you'd have said to me, name me three of the best defensive, holding, readers of the game, breakers up of play in European world football, I would have put a good argument for him to be in there. Mm. We saw another case of him again tonight making poor decision after poor decision after poor challenge, uh, clumsy challenges, late challenges, getting to the ball late. How he, he got a yellow card in the second half, how he wasn't booked before that and after that again, and that, that kind of sums it up. He's gone from playing that position brilliantly to effectively part of the season not even been on the field. And when he has, has been on the field, he just... He's not been able to do any of that reading of the game and breaking up the play and covering the fullbacks that he did. And it's nine months ago. It's not five years ago. Mm. It's nine to 12 months ago he was doing what he was doing. And he's not, it's not like he's 35 or 36. I was, I I was just getting ready to answer what I thought your question was going to be two minutes ago. Oh. When you asked me about top four. I thought you were going to ask me about top six. You actually surprised me when you asked me about top four. Because, quite frankly, is there anybody watch, that watches Liverpool today thinks there is the remotest possibility they're in the top four? And, actually, is there really any chance that they qualify for Europe? I would say no. Uh, you know, oh, sorry, I know you're going. I know he has a lot of money in the bank, and I'm not, in terms of his job, I'm not suggesting for a minute... Uh, and probably yeah. literally as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I wonder now whether even the Liverpool fans, the staunch, hardcore Liverpool fans, not that they're looking for his... But I wonder whether they're questioning in their mind whether he can turn this ship around. I th I, listen, as a Liverpool fan, I think... I would expect that most people would think the way I do. Let's hope not. <laughs> God forbid for them. <laughs> but even right now, I'm thinking, OK, what happens at the start of the next season is very important for him and everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy to think. If we'd said this when this season started, you would have thought I was off me rocker, even though you probably do anyway. But that's kind of where I am. Never mind Europe. I'm kind of thinking, wow, he's, got, he's, he's going to have to do some things in the summer to get this team back on board. Otherwise, all that money he's got in the bank, could somebody could rob it. Frank, how much trouble are Liverpool in? Well, they're not in trouble. <laughs> they will have to find a way to, uh, to come back to their best, but this season is over. I think, as Stevie said, I don't even see them finishing in the top six. Um, they're not hungry, and they're not angry anymore. I think... Klopp worked on that uh, five years ago when he came to, uh, to the club and uh, made sure that the players were starving before playing a game, that they wanted the ball, they were desperate to get the ball, they were desperate to win every, every challenges, which they're not anymore. So he has to find a way. So he used to cuddle the players, I would say, to be very close to the players. Does he need to thread them? Does he need to take distance? I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's the right answer. I'm not sure that's the right way to, to do that. But in order to create a reaction uh, to the players or from the players, you have to change something. Because to keep on doing what you used to do doesn't work anymore. Those players want everything. So they're comfortably seated in their champion seats. 
but you have to make sure they, they're going to get out of the throne and they're going to work again if they are the players that you want to, to keep on working with you. Otherwise, you have to sweep the dressing room, make sure they're out, and you create something else with somebody or some others. That's the only way. But this season, they don't risk too much because they, don't, they can't hop on anything for me. And fans have to accept that, like Chelsea fans have to accept that and pray that next year is going to be a, or next season is going to be a better season. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.